friends, and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. Either way, I'm glad you're here. Today, I wanted to share with you some of my favorite items that I use when I'm decorating my valley. Share some ideas of how to use those items, and maybe sprinkle in a few tips and tricks along the way. If you enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and click the bell if you'd like to be notified of my future uploads. Without further ado, let's get on with it. While I enjoy using all of the various items located in the underbrush category in my builds, the beach grass has quickly become my favorite piece of underbrush. Specifically, if you cycle through the different shapes that are available, there is one that can be stacked with some of the other items, like trees and bushes, as well as furniture items. I personally enjoy a more cluttered appearance in my builds, and using the beach grass helps me achieve that look. Another item in the underbrush category that is at the top of my list of favorite items is the fern. I really like that we have a couple different color variations to choose from, which gives the player the option to use these to add some depth to a build or some color variation. I like to use them along paths since they can be walked over and this is especially helpful to help create an opening along a pathway if I'm using a lot of bushes or rocks to outline it. These can also be used on the corners of pathways to help create a rounded appearance. While I can't necessarily say trees are on the top of my list as far as favorite items go, I did want to include a couple of them in this video simply to provide some tips and tricks to using them, starting with the tall maple. Not only do I think that this is one of the prettiest trees that we have available in the game, but it's also one of the most versatile. Like a lot of the landscaping items, you will get varied trees each time you pick one up. This not only provides a natural variation in the game, but it also allows you to cycle through until you get the exact size and shape you're looking for. Another reason why I really love using the tall maples in my builds is because if you find the right one when you are cycling through the variations, they don't have to be placed on grass. This makes them ideal for using along pathways or really in any build where a path has been laid. Another item that I wanted to quickly mention is the dead bushes. Now I'm not choosing to include these because they are necessarily favorites of mine. In fact, I think their use is a little bit limited, at least in my builds. However, aside from the obvious use in Frosted Heights and Forgotten Lands, I have enjoyed using these on the beach to help create an overgrown area. I won't spend too much time on paths and rocks, because I think by now a lot of builders and decorators are already using the rocks to create curved paths in their games. However, I did want to at least include the rocks in this video as they are some of my favorite items to use when decorating. I don't always line an entire path with them, mostly because of the item limit. Instead, I like to use them on the corners in conjunction with underbrush items like the ferns to help give a curved look to a path. There are a lot of really great tutorials out there on how to use the rocks to create a curved path, and I will link my favorite one in the description below. While I focus a lot of attention on making my valley look good, I also want it to be functional. For this reason, the campfire quickly became one of my favorite craftable items in the game early on. I mostly play the game at night and I love how the fire looks in my game. I also really like that I have it available to stop and cook a quick berry salad when I need energy. If you have watched any of my speed builds or tours, you already know that the lighted gazebo is one of my favorite craftable items. Not only is it gorgeous at night, but it is also very versatile. Lately, my favorite way to use it has been to create a bar area. I also really like using it to create covered seating areas. And this brings me to a tip that I wanted to share with you all. When decorating in your game, I suggest using the controls and the settings to decorate for the time of day you generally play. 
I think a lot of people already do this, but I wanted to include it anyway, just in case there are any new players watching this video. And also because it is one of my favorite ways to decorate. You can use your recipes to create food items to use as decoration in your valley. All you need to do is craft your item and then go into your inventory, drop the item, and then go into furniture mode to place the item where you want it in your valley. My favorite items to use are the popsicles, the shake, and the french fries recipes. Not only can you use the food recipes to decorate in your valley, but there are also a couple really great items in the crafting recipes as well. Lately, I've really been into using the potions and the ropes to decorate in my builds. I'd like to end this video today with one more tip. When decorating in Disney's Dreamlight Valley, think outside the box. A roll of fabric becomes a yoga mat, a crafted potion, becomes suntan lotion for sale in a booth on the beach. A desktop computer becomes a cash register at the coffee shop. A dresser, it's an outdoor storage shed. I think you get the point. Most importantly, do what makes you happy in your game and have fun. Until next time, friends, peace out.